Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Steven. And I'm Sam. And uh, this is our project for geometry for Professor Akbar at the University of Texas at Dallas. Today, we will be covering the Varignon theorem, or Varignon's theorem. And uh, Varignon was a French mathematician. It was uh, published in 1731, and it states that the midpoints of an arbitrary quadrilateral when connected form a parallelogram. The theorem also states that uh, so long as the quadrilateral is convex, then the area of the parallelogram will be half of the total area of the quadrilateral itself, but we're not really going to get into that. And so a little bit about a little bit about Varignon himself. So a little background information on Varignon. As I said before, he was a French mathematician. He lived from 1654, <coughs> he was born in Caen, until 1722. He died in Paris three days before Christmas. He was educated at the Jesuit College, and in addition, he also received an education at the University of Caen. He, uh, he was a professor at the Collège Mazarin. And he taught there for many years. He was also voted into the Académie Royale de Sciences. He was inducted into this academy at the same time he started teaching at Mazarin. In addition, uh, he was also voted into the Berlin Academy in 1713, and he was a member of the Royal Society with Isaac Newton and Leibniz. And he joined the Royal Society in 1718. He was a friend of Leibniz, he was a friend of Newton, and he was also friends with the Berlin. Okay, so we're going to try to prove that theorem that was just mentioned. Uh, let me write it down real quick. So we want to show that given any quadrilateral, <clears throat> and if we take the midpoints, the midpoints of said quadrilateral form a parallelogram. Okay, so let's take a look at um, two pictures real quick. So here is quadrilateral, okay? So let's take the midpoints of this quadrilateral, like that, and take that, and right here, and then we'll connect them. Okay, and so we want to show that this is a parallelogram right here. Um, so P, Q, uh, S, R, this is A, B, C, D. <coughs> okay. So we also want to show that, so given any quadrilateral, that this holds true. So given a quadrilateral that looks something like this, which is obviously not the same as this, we draw these midpoints again. We connect those. And OK. Now, they kind of look like a parallelogram, but that's, that's not good enough. We want to show that no matter what, given any of these, that this holds true. So, uh, before I do that, I want to go ahead and recall a few things. First, <coughs> all 
first. Um, I'm going to call that parallel lines uh, produce like angles when they intercept the same line. triangles are similar if they have the same angles. <clears throat> and the third thing I want to recall is that triangles are similar if um, they share sim the same ratios between the same sides, corresponding sides actually. So triangles, similar, <clears throat> if they're corresponding sides, <clears throat> are proportional. All right, so an example of the second one right here. will be, we'll take one triangle, we'll start here, and we'll take another triangle, much, much bigger. And these two right here, let's say that they have the same angles, right? So this, is, this right here will be the same angle as this, this angle right here, the same angle as this, this angle right here, the same angle as this right here. So because of that, these two are similar. Now, as these are similar, this side A, uh, B, C, A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, <coughs> their corresponding sides are proportional. So what that means is this side to this side has a difference of the same rate from this side to this side. So if we take A over A prime, that's the same thing as B over B prime, and that's the same thing as C over C prime. Okay? And we're going to use these facts to prove that theorem that we mentioned earlier. And let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so we're going to take a triangle and draw in uh, a midpoint. Now this right here, this triangle is going to be the top half of the quadrilateral we had earlier. Okay, so uh, we're going to say P is the midpoint of this point right here, ABC. <coughs> and so, since this is the midpoint, we know that this side is the same length as this side. And what we're going to want to do is say, let's draw a line from P that is parallel to AC. Okay, so. Parallel goes across. And this line right here intersects BC at this point right here, and we're just going to call that Q. Okay, so from right here, as PQ is parallel to AC, we can gain a few little bits of information about these angles. Um, as PQ is parallel to AC, we can see that this angle and these angles are the same. So we have uh, CAB, CAB is equal to the angle of QPB, QPB, and we also have the angle um, ACB, ACB is equal to the angle PQB. And if we draw that on this triangle, it looks like so. So this right here is the same as this one, and this angle right here is the same as this one right here. Okay? Now from this, we can see that this top triangle right here is similar to this whole triangle as, well, as these angles are the same right here, and this initial angle right here is also the same for each individual triangle. So, so right here, all this shows us that triangle PQB 
is similar to triangle ABC. <coughs> and since these are similar, their corresponding uh, sides must be proportional. So this right here, this again applies corresponding sides proportional. Okay. So let's jot down a little bit of the information that we know right here. We know that triangle <coughs> QPB is similar to triangle ABC, right? So that's what we got out of just doing that work right there. Now, this right here, or in this triangle right here, as AP is equal to PB, We have that CQ must be equal to BQ as well, since these two are similar. Then uh, QC is equal to B, BQ. Thus, thus Q is a midpoint of. B, C. So we have this now. This is what we have uh, after all that work. Now, from, okay, from this right here, we have now shown that the line we get uh, by connecting the midpoints um, is the same as the line we get when we draw a parallel uh, through the midpoint. So these two, th this is the situation we get in the end. What we ended up proving with that is, is that Q must be a midpoint. So we'll be, after that, um, this pretty much states that if we have these two points that are midpoints, these two lines are going to be parallel. So if we take this um, in our big picture, our quadrilateral, which let's do that now. Let's extend this into our quadrilateral. <coughs> okay, so quadrilateral looks something like this. draw a line right through here and this represents this right here represents the top this triangle right here and this is um, the bottom half of the triangle where all the same properties hold all we did is just take a part of it just look at only part of it um, so let's draw our midpoints on here here's one here's two three four <coughs> so in this triangle right here, in this triangle right here, if P and Q are midpoints, of, um, then PQ is parallel to AC. So in this case right here, we have this. This is PQ, right? Um, this is A, B, C, D. So PQ must be parallel to AC, as shown from right here. So we know. This is parallel, and this is parallel, okay? Now, we take that exact same st thing that we proved right here, we proved that this triangle um, gives us the following, that this right here is parallel to this line right here, as that is the same base. So now, we know that this line is parallel to here. Now, we, this is also true if we take the triangle on the side. So if we rotated this on the side, we would get that this and this are also parallel. And these right here, along <coughs> with this little, you know, divisor. And thus we have that this inscribed quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, therefore, P, Q, R, S, R, S, is a parallelogram. So another way to prove the theorem is by using vectors. So if we take a triangle, let's call it ABC, 
and it's again, imagine that it's the top half of some arbitrary quadrilateral. And we take the midpoint here of A, let's call it P, and the midpoint here of BC, let's call it Q. So, taking vectors AB plus BC, we get AC. And likewise, when we take PB plus BQ, we get PQ. As you can see from the picture, going from AB to BC is AC, and PB to BQ is PQ. And then, again, noting that PB is then equal to one half of AB, and that BQ is then equal to one half of BC. So now that we have this, we can substitute it back in and get that PQ must then equal to one half of AC, which based on our math should imply that PQ is then the same direct, it, because they're vectors, it should be in the same direction as AC, which means that PQ and AC are parallel.